They say when it rains, it pours, and that's certainly the case with mirrorless cameras. With the high frame rates we have available to us, it's easy to rack up a ton of images very quickly, and that means a lot of photos to go through once you're back at the computer. I'm going to show you an image calling tip, not a trick or a hack, and much less a secret trick or epic hack, because those overused words are so cheesy, and that's cheesy with a Z. This tip will help you out big time in choosing the best shot out of a series of similar photos. It might not be news to you, but in my experience with my workshop clients, I've found that many photographers don't seem to know about it. Hola amigos, I'm Greg Basco, a professional nature photographer and workshop leader based in Latin America, and I want to talk to you about Lightroom Survey View. I use it all the time when I come home from a shoot or a trip, even though I do a lot, and I mean a lot of initial culling in camera, and yes, that's okay, I'm often still left with plenty of similar photos to go through at the computer. I want to quickly eliminate the losers in order to arrive at the best one or two shots. Portrait and commercial and sports and wedding photographers will certainly know what I'm talking about too. The survey view in Lightroom can give us a big assist, so let's jump to the computer. I have had a busy time traveling in Latin America so far this year, and I was blessed to have had some amazing photographic experiences. I photographed endangered giant river otters in the Ecuadorian Amazon with late afternoon backlight, three-toed sloths, and poison frogs in the incredible Bocas del Toro Islands of Panama. After that, I went higher in elevation to Peru, where I photographed Andean condors, alpacas, and had a lucky encounter with an indigenous festival in a small town in the high Andes Mountains, before also photographing the world's largest bromeliad. After that, I had some great opportunities for red-eyed tree frogs, scarlet macaws, and squirrel monkeys in my home country of Costa Rica, and I even had time for some blue-hour photography of the incredible city of Medellin, Colombia. So, there are a lot of images to go through here, and that's even after I called in camera. I mentioned I do that a lot, and I will delete in camera. Similar pictures, one that, that have some obvious flaws or maybe aren't obviously aren't sharp. I know I have plenty more, and I'll do the culling as well for photos like this series of frog shots or this series of the uh, party shots here, the indigenous festival, this series of the red-eyed tree frog where I'm not shooting in burst mode. Either way, I'm going to call in camera so I can get down to a few pictures. But you can see, even with that, there's a lot of pictures, and that's with 20 frames per second on my Canon R5. Now that I have the Canon R5 II, I'll have Unfortunately, I suppose 30 frames per second to deal with on occasion. I don't use the fastest frame rate very often, but I will use it in a scenario like this where I have a photo of a scarlet macaw flying through a rainforest in the Osa Peninsula of Costa Rica. So let's just take a look at the survey view and how I think it can help you to deal with going through all of these images and picking out the one or two that you're going to keep in your collection. So the first thing to know is that you need to be in the library module of Lightroom to use the survey view and you need to be um, ideally in the grid view. Uh, grid view, you can also hit G for grid and that will do it for you. And so let's say I have a few a few photos here that I want to go through. Uh, I'm not gonna pick out all of these because there's a lot, I'm gonna take it piece by piece. So I'm gonna select the ones that I wanna take a better look at kind of side by side. And from there, we can go to this little icon down here, which says survey view, or of course, as logic would dictate, you could hit the letter N for survey. And now we're in the survey view. Another thing I like to do is to hit shift tab, and that allows us to hide all of the Lightroom panels so that we have a bigger view here. So what's the big deal with survey mode? You might be saying, Greg, I could get this same view in the grid module by selecting these same photos and then enlarging the thumbnails. But survey mode offers us more. There is no right or correct way to use it. Everybody's different, but I do it like this. I'm gonna go through and quickly try to eliminate some of the obvious losers, like this one here. I can see I just don't like the position of the macaw where, uh, where he is in the frame, uh, because it's too close to the palm leaves. Similarly, this next one in the top row in the middle, uh, don't like that one too, don't like that position, and this one he's too far down. So right away I could say that all three of those I want to get rid of. So I'm going to click on this one on the top left, hit the letter X, and set it as rejected. And I can see that there's a little thing right there that says that. I'm gonna hit this next one, also hit the letter X and set as rejected, and I'm going to hit this one and hit the letter X. Now, 
Great, I could do that in the grid view as well, but now here I can drop these out of survey view, and as I do that, you can see that now I'm getting a bigger view of the images that I still want to take a further look at. Um, so right now I can see I don't like this one at top left as much, uh, because again, he's a little too far over to the right of the frame, not right out in that open space where I was trying to anticipate the macaws as I was shooting in burst mode. I also don't like the wing position, so that's an X, and we'll drop that out right away. This one in top left looks pretty promising. It looks quite similar to this one at top right. And I think I like those better than the ones on the bottom, just because on the bottom, it's a little too far to the left. I like the ones on the top better because there's more of some space uh, for the macaw to fly into. So again, I'm gonna X this one, drop it out. I'll X this one and drop it out, although that's a pretty nice shot still. And so I'm left with these two. Now, I could zoom in on either one of them. I could take a look. Okay, that's looking pretty good. I could hit N again, and I'm back in survey mode. I could zoom in on this one, really zoom in, hit N again. And I think I like the one on the right just a little bit better because the wings are slightly more spread. So again, I'm going to X this one, set as rejected. And here's my final winner from that series. I'm going to hit G. And now I'm back in the grid mode, and you can see here that there are a number of photos that are now rejected. So I could go ahead and do delete all rejected photos, and now I'm getting somewhere. Let's take um, just one more look at this series of photos that I took of the largest bromeliad in the world, Uja Raimondi, in the highlands of Peru. And I was here with my good friend Frank Pichardo at about 4,200 meters above sea level. Uh, so I want to take a look at these. These weren't shot in burst mode, of course, because it's a sunset right after sunset shot. Uh, so I had a slow shutter speed, probably a second, two seconds. I'm on a tripod, totally different sort of scenario, but I can still use the survey mode to help me along and choose the winning shot. So again, I'm going to hit N and I'm going to take a look at some of these. Right away, I can see up at the top left, um, there's no person in there. And so you really lose the sense of scale of this bromeliad, which overall is about five plus eight, 13 meters, over 40 feet high uh, is, the, is the size of this bromeliad with the leaves here and then the inflorescence, which produces hundreds of flowers that are pollinated by highland hummingbirds. So this one's out, I'm gonna hit X. Okay, and we'll drop it out. But now here are a couple of other things one could do if you wanted. And I can already see by looking at these that this one right over here in the middle row on the right is the one I like best because there's more light coming in, um, lighting up some of the clouds down in the valley behind the bromeliad. And so I think that's gonna be my win winning one. So I could do a couple things with that. I could uh, hit control and the up arrow to increase the flag status. I could right click it and assign a color label, let's say green. And I could say this one is five stars. So I could simply hit five on the keyboard and set the rating of that one to five. And I could do some of these other ones. If I said, for instance, that, okay, this one up, at, uh, up in the middle, that one's looking okay. I wanna take another look at it. It might be useful for a different reason just because it has a different kind of light or something like that. I could do anything I wanted. I could increase his flag status so that I know I want to look at it later. But all these other ones, again, I could X, 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 and this one, yeah, I'll X it too. What the heck? Okay, so I could drop them out from the survey mode if I needed to here, but I've already chosen my winning photo. So all I need to do at this point is go back to G, the grid mode. And now you can see in those photos I've selected, these ones up here are ready for deletion because they're marked with an X. And this one down here, you can see it has an increased flag. It has a green label. It has five stars, everything it needs to be fully approved. I hope Lightroom's survey view will save you some time at the computer during your next editing session. What could you do with that precious gift of extra time? I suggest that you use it to hit the like and subscribe buttons below. If you'd like to join me in the field next year in Costa Rica, Ecuador, Peru, Chile, or Panama, be sure to check out my workshops page. I'll leave a link below and I'll see you next time, amigos.